We do begin tonight with Tainapora and the issue of his compensation for two decades in prison, Paremaremo, by the way, for a rape and murder he did not commit. As you heard in the news, Tainapora Pora himself wants to accept the government's $2.5 million offer, but is asking whether he can do so and test the issue of adjusting that sum for inflation. In short, Mr Pora doesn't have conventional rights of appeal here. This is a cabinet decision. It's not a judicial one. Tainapora Pora would not be in the position of being offered an apology and compensation at all of having his convictions quashed and his innocence publicly affirmed by a cabinet minister, were it not for Tim McKinnell, a former police detective who first began the long and tenacious business of proving Pora's innocence. Tim McKinnell was out of New Zealand yesterday when the compensation package was announced, but this afternoon he joined us in the studio to discuss the government's offer and his and Tana Pora's reaction to it. Tana's response is a little bit different than our response. Tana, Tana's enormously grateful, profoundly grateful, for first the apology and acknowledgement of innocence, uh, and, and that shouldn't be forgotten. That means more to him than anything. Um, the money is, uh, is, is not his primary focus. Um, he's relying heavily on us for advice around um, money and quantum, and he, he really doesn't have a firm view on that. What he wants uh, is to be treated fairly. Um, we, we've written today to, to the minister um, to ask whether there's a possibility that Tana c could accept the government's offer and leave the door open for a judicial review on the, on the inflation aspect. Um, we think there's a strong case that um, inflation should be applied, particularly like for somebody like Tana who spent 22 years in prison. Inflation's a big deal over 22 years. Mm. And um, we'd like Tana to have the opportunity to fight that at a later point if he wants to. He hasn't made that decision, but um, <laughs> He's in a, a relatively vulnerable position where he has a powerful government offering him some money, take it or leave it, and we don't think that that's right. If that door could be left open on that very narrow point, I think um, that would go a long way towards resolving this. As the man without whom none of this would have happened, we would still regard Tainapora as guilty of the crimes he did not commit. What do you think of this offer? Uh, well, I was, to be frank, disappointed. I think it was um, substantially less than what we'd asked for um, and, and, and also less than um, what we thought was reasonable. Um, if you apply uh, the uh, Inflation Consumer Price Index to, to the quantum, as, as Justice Hanson has suggested, um, it becomes a much more reasonable offer and um, I think probably entirely acceptable to, to, to us as the legal team. Um, so, you know, it, it was a disappointing and somewhat deflating offer. Um, when when you remove the inflation component. Tim, can I talk about the circumstances in which it was made? Has it seemed hurried over the past week or two to you? Yeah, it's a curious thing. Um, it's It's been a slow, methodical, careful process. Um, it's been done very well. Minister Adams has, um, has uh, been very fair and even-handed throughout. Um, but all of a sudden, in the last week or two, there's been real pressure come on, uh, timing pressure. And, and we're at a bit of a loss to explain what that's about. Um, and, you know, that was compounded by, by a leak um, to media the day before the, um, the announcement was made by the minister, which was, which was also curious. And so it, it, it feels like something else is at play here, and we don't quite know what that is. Do you care to speculate what might be at play? Well, it's, you know, some, for some reason, um, this process has become um, time critical and, and politicised and, and none of that's necessary as far as we can see. This should be about justice, not about... Um, so you weren't sitting there. Jonathan Krebs, Ingrid, Tainer, none of them were sitting there saying, get on with this, give us an offer. You were prepared to continue with the slow and methodical approach. Absolutely, and we were quite happy to, for it to move forward at a good pace. There's no difficulty with that, but you know, T Tana has some very specific difficulties, and 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 we've always made that very clear. And 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 to put pressure on him in terms of timings with with his FASD, I think, is is unreasonable. Um, and and so we just want time to consider the position. But at the same time, Tana has. Uh, uh, no, no job at the moment. He's um, he spent 22, 23 years in prison. Parts of his life in the last two years have been very difficult, and he has this offer on the table, which at this mm. moment is a take-it-or-leave-it offer, uh, and that pl places enormous pressure on him.
Is there a deadline to make this decision? Has the government said you need to get back to us ASAP? Where are you at with that? No, no in fairness, they haven't put a deadline on, on it with us, but I'm, I'm, I'm aware that um, we've a time, take it or leave it our ultimatum's been, been given um, or, or commented on by the Prime Minister. Tim, you talked about the, the sort of sense of pressure on Tana potentially, the, the fact that he doesn't handle pressure very well because of the fetal, out, uh, fetal alcohol disorder. If we go back to the initial investigation, and, and, and the way he was interviewed, there seems certainly from the video footage that we all saw on 3D to be a sense that he was put under pressure then. Now, we've tried very hard to talk to the police about this investigation, and they say, and I quote, there are lessons to be learned from this case, but there is nothing to suggest that police staff involved acted in anything other than good faith. Do you think that's a fair assessment of the investigation? I think it needs to be broken into two parts. One is what happened in the 90s, leading up to the 2000 trial, or the, the both trials, and then what's happened since we took this case on, uh, beginning in 2009, and how the police have conducted themselves then. Uh, let's be very clear, Justice Hanson's job was not to focus on whether the police uh, operated and conducted themselves properly. That was not the focus of, of his report. Nobody has looked at that, there's been no review. Uh, I don't know how we can possibly form a sound view on impropriety or not until it's properly reviewed by somebody independent. You got involved after the second trial, right? Or around the time of the second trial in 2000, is it? I, be I became aware of the case in 2000, yeah. And, um, and, and there was a lot of conflict within the police uh, about whether or not Tanner should have been tried, let alone convicted. So, so you were working with people in the police force in Auckland at the time who were expressing real disquiet about the quality of the conviction? Absolutely, uh, about the specifically about the confessions and his guilt or innocence. So, the, the, you know, there's no hiding from that. People were uncomfortable with it uh, at, after the second trial. And that's when you looked up and thought, wow, has there been a miscarriage of justice? Yeah, and it was something that percolated and developed over time. And by 2009, I was personally in a position where I could go and see Tanner and do something about it. But it, it sat with me for nine years where, where nothing happened. And we've gone back and asked whether anything happened in that intervening period and nothing happened, and neither with the police or anybody else. It's just... so, so as I said in the intro to this interview, without you, none of this would have happened. It would not have been quashed at the Privy Council. He would not have received an offer of two and a half million dollars. And so what are we to make of a system that allows that to happen? Because without Tim McKinnell, Taina Pora would still be guilty of the murder of Susan Burdett. That's, lot, that's right, and it sort of, it, it leads, it to, it leads the, the justice system to a certain degree of randomness and, or good luck. And uh, you know, that's not proper. I, you know, I'm very firmly of the view we need a Criminal Case Review Commission, an outlet for these types of cases, and there are plenty of them. Tainers is a pr particularly egregious, and I would argue incredibly obvious example. Um, and how he was left to rot for so long is, is absolutely beyond me. But um, the, there needs to be some way that cases like this can be properly ventilated so that people don't have to go through the fight that we've had to go through for the last six and a half years. Why did you do it? Why did you fight the fight? Uh, well, it was an interesting case. It was always an interesting case, and I eventually, um, you know, nine years after I first heard about it, was in a position where I, where I could do something. And uh, you know, I was just the first person. There, were, there have been many, many people that have committed a huge amount of time and effort uh, into this case. And so I don't want to sit here and pretend it's all about me. It's not. It's about a much wider team, Jonathan and Ingrid uh, in particular, who've worked incredibly hard. But it, sh it shouldn't be left to individuals to take massive personal um, risks and, and commercial risks to get this over the line. It's been, it's taken an enormous toll on a lot of people over many years. H has anyone been paid for their work? I mean, yeah, yeah, we have, um, you know, and, and le legal aid, I have to say, um, very early on, we um, made a couple of quite courageous decisions they didn't need to Did make. They, so, so there was legal aid support for, for you and for the, for the lawyers? For, for the most part, there were times where we were working unpaid, um, particularly in the first year or two. So if you look back on your hourly rate, it would be low, wouldn't it? I, I suspect it would be less than $10 an hour. Right. So ironically, <laughs> like Tainer's hourly rate, really, for his time in jail. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was, um, you know, and, and, and the system shouldn't be left to individuals like this. So the argument that the system worked and, and Tainer's um, conviction has been quashed is, is, is a very, very flawed argument if it relies on individuals uh, taking a punt. Yeah. What should Tainer Pora get? What do you think would be a fair and reasonable compensation offer from the government for everything this young man, who, as you say, is intellectually impaired by fetal alcohol disorder, 
who seemed to be uh, under a very heavy tide, what do you think he should get for spending more than two decades in jail? Well, having read Justice Hansett's report, he does a very thorough, very objective job, and um, I'd be very reluctant to criticise anything he says. Um, he's far more objective than we are, so we need to take some note of what he says. But um, he's very clear, I think, on the on the inflation point. You know, the application of the consumer price index, I think, is if that is done properly and fairly for the full period of time Tanner spent in prison, that will get us very, very close to, I think, a, a figure that is that is fair. I, you can never properly compensate Tanner. You will never, ever replace or compensate him for what he's been through. And some of the things he's been through are unspeakable. And, and um, I, you know, I, people just don't know what he's had to go through to get to where he is. And so it will never properly compensate him. But um, I, th I think if, the, um, if inflation is applied to the figure that's been offered, I think we're getting close. And what would that monetary figure be, Tim? We don't know. I'm not, um, I'm not <laughs> an actuary, but I, my, my suspicion is it would lift the, the um, 2.5 million to, um, you know, somewhere between um, 3 and 4 million. Tim McKinnell, I spoke to him this afternoon. So somewhere between three and four million. In other words, somewhere in the region of 500,000 to a million dollars more than the current offer. Now, there are a number of issues raised here, and one of them is about the quality of the police investigation of Taina Pora and the rape and murder of Susan Burdett. We've tried really hard to talk to the police about this. They put out a statement yesterday and declined our invitation to be interviewed. We went back to them today and said, hey, we don't think that statement addresses the issue substantively and we would like to talk to you about this and once again they have declined. What about the politics of this? Well we wanted to speak to the Prime Minister and this afternoon he was out having a media stand up at Rainbow's End in South Auckland so I went out there, I asked him why Tim McKinnell said things had been moving slowly and methodically and then suddenly there was pressure from the government to make the compensation announcement this week. Because it went to Cabinet on Monday and we are always a bit suspect that, that things will uh, last because once they go through the Cabinet process it's generally known by a broader audience. As we now know actually the information was leaked and so um, we obviously can't sit on things forever. Why did it go to Cabinet on Monday though? Why did it have to go to Cabinet on Monday? I mean Tim McKinnell has a real sense that the pace changed in the past couple of weeks. I don't think so. I mean the... I don't, can't tell you exactly when Amy Adams got the report from uh, Justice Hanson, but it was a wee while ago, I think. Um, it's relatively straightforward. The government's accepted the recommendations, with the well, exception of the inflation thing, but that's a, that's an issue really more about the long-term structure of the of how the, the process should work. Outside that, it was pretty straightforward. We just accepted his advice. And are you tempted to reconsider the issue of inflation in the context of what's been said in the past 24 hours? Well, the guidelines uh, you know, could be considered. I mean, I think they're unlikely to be static forever um, because times change and the value of money changes and things over time. So yes, it's not unreasonable over time they'd be looked at. I and mean, one of the risks is if you look at these things is they can move in all sorts of different directions. Our sense is the guidelines are broadly in the right place at the moment. I mean, as I've been saying, I mean, internationally, we're at the sort of not completely best in class, but we're you know, more generous than a lot of other countries. I mean, no amount of money is ever going to give back the 20 years that Tana Pora spent in prison. Or the other people. I mean, there have been six people under the new guidelines, I think, as far as I'm aware. But about 25 people, I think, since Arthur Allen Thomas. So all of those are people that have had a period of their life where they've been incarcerated and they shouldn't have been. And the, the law has made a, a mistake. CPI adjusted in dollar terms, what Arthur Allen Thomas got was equivalent to about $4 million today. In other words, he did demonstrably better in financial terms for nine years than Tainapora did for two decades. Yeah, but I think it's worth remembering, though, that um, the government while it has guidelines, is very careful because there's always going to be scrutiny not to go and try and make those decisions itself. It gets advice and that advice came from Justice Hanson. And Justice Hanson went and looked at a relative basis to everyone else. So Arthur Allen Thomas, for instance, and it's very difficult to compare apples with oranges, but Arthur Allen Thomas um, 
was essentially framed. Uh, you know, there was, there was there was real issues about uh, the police work at the time, and that was accepted. Arthur Allen Thomas got his compensation payment at the time where there wasn't guidelines. This is quite different. I mean, there was. Um, misjudgments, or whatever the exact words Justice Hanson uses, but not the sort of implications that there were in Arthur Allen Thomas, and there was guidelines. So if we were to give Taina Pora something different, then what would we say to the five people that we applied the guidelines to? The Prime Minister, if you wonder what that screaming was in the background, we were doing that interview in the car park outside Rainbow's End just after three o'clock this afternoon.